Hi there, this is Chris from PC Gamer, and I'm joined by Tom Senior to show you through the Twilight Arbor dungeon of Guild Wars 2. This is a level 50 dungeon that no one's ever seen before, we can show you up to the first boss. Just a note on the video, we had some recording difficulties when we actually got this footage. It was a problem with the machine, not the game itself, um, so we didn't notice we were recording, but there will be some frame rate slowdown, but we thought you'd like to see this dungeon anyway, so we thought we'd show you the video. Awesome. This is um, me running around in a puddle, <laughs> waiting for my group to get together to uh, start the dungeon. Um, this is a Silvari themed dungeon from a little bit later in the game. All of the dungeons in the Guild Wars 2 in story mode, you're led by a member of Destiny's Edge, which is this like super hero group. They're the ones that disband uh, before okay. the start of Guild Wars 2, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 back there's a novel uh, where they kind of all come together and then they've kind of disbanded. Uh, Ritlock is, and it, there's one for each race, so Ritlock and it, actually Washington Cutsy. Valen's firstborn, like me. She's powerful and dangerous, but she wasn't always that way. When our race was new, we traveled together, her and I. We became close. We found a great darkness. I pulled back from it. Valen embraced it. She seduces others to unspeakable acts. I cannot stop her alone. That is why I need you, and Ritlock, and Logan. I will not work with this human. He'll desert us again. I did what I had to do. Then you can do this without me. If I see you again, Logan, I will carve you. So that's Destiny's Edge disbanding Destiny's again. Oh man, not <laughs> again. <laughs> Can't say together. Um, I think the, the backstory is that Logan, who's the human member, actually abandoned the group during uh, a big I fight see. in the right. book. and. Um, and now Ritlock, who doesn't hasn't forgiven him for it, has also abandoned Ritlock being the um, the charm member of the group. Okay, um, played by Steve Blum. Brilliant, his grunt from Mass Effect. Hence the really voice. So, why are we why are we here? What's the so we're tracking down um, a uh, sort of an evil Silvari called mm. Fowlin, um, who well the Silvari are the sort of uh, a really, really young race. It's interesting, they're kind of Guild Wars to take on elves, but instead of being incredibly old, they're incredibly, incredibly young. Mm. And they've never really encountered things like death or evil before. So they're the, uh, the leaf people. Yeah, they're made of trees. Yeah. Um, but uh, most, yeah. And so this is all inside one massive tree, this, this dungeon. Yeah. Um, which is hence the Twilight Arbor. Um, hell of a lot of punching spiders. I'm playing a guardian. Um, who's a kind of magic-based melee character, really good at putting up shields and things. And I'm playing with um, four members of the Guild Wars 2 QA team, who run these dungeons all the time. So we make pretty quick progress. They know because, exactly yeah, what's coming. They do this four times a day. Yeah. Um, so here's, this is um, how they introduce a mechanic, which is rescuing Silvari prisoners from these pods. And every time you open one of these pods, there's a chance that the uh, person inside will be bad guy, right? So it's another mo the mob to fight. Otherwise, there's a chance that there'll be a good guy, in which case you get a buff, which means that if you run out of health, you'll get all your health back. Wow, that's it's potentially awesome. Yeah. Um, and the odds of that happening are kind of like closely guarded secret, but it's this kind of risk reward thing of yeah. freeing the prisoners and getting the awesome buff versus having to fight another mob, which, if you're in the middle of a tough fight, can be difficult. So how challenging are these fighters compared to most villains you'd encounter like, at level 15? I mean, 15? we are. I mean, we are clearing. I mean, it's not... Actually, to be honest, it's not that different from mm -hmm. clearing sort of regular event mobs. Um, we're kind of using the same strategies we would be. You can see the markings on the ground for where AoE is coming in. Yeah. Um, I'm currently using two-handed sword, which allows me to throw out this AoE. Oh, see, here we got a... a, oh, a, a one. We've got three wow. save ones in a row, which is statistically <laughs> unlikely. Um, Good guy. And then... Oh, and a bad guy. So uh, when does that buff kick in? Is it just when you're... It's, a, it's immediate. Well, you get it immediately and your entire oh. team gets it. Yeah. Or maybe, I think we'll be in a radius around the original thing. Mm. Um, but the the idea is to try and use it as, as sort of a backup, right? So you kind of like try and stock up on it before yeah. you go and take on the boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so these guys individually aren't much of a problem, but we can't fight too many of them at once. The health bars are pretty chunky. 
Um, I'm, I'm in a sort of DPS mode at the moment, so I have a two-handed sword, which allows me to do AoE, and I um, can still sort of hunt down some shields and do some healing stuff, but it's nowhere near as effective as it would be if I had a shield. Mm. Um, and that's because we're only fighting sort of one enemy at a time, but even then you can see I'm losing big chunks of health. Yeah. We're being supported by Warrior, who's placing that banner down, the banner of defense, which is again helping. And we've got, um, we've also got a, a Necromancer with us as well, and a Thief. I guess um, the thing we always talk about with Guild Wars 2 is that non has, uh, everyone can do a bit of everything. So yeah, yeah. Do you take, still take roles within this group? So that if there's someone who's dedicated to supporting it's, 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 it's less cut and dry than other MMOs, like, it's more about um, making sure that you can handle different kinds of damage, wherever that comes from. So it may be that you're, you know, for example, firing a, uh, an arrow through a light field cures poison. So that in that sort of situation where a Mesmer and a ranger can do the job of a healer, you know yeah. what I mean? And so it's, it's sort of, you're still kind of achieving the same things in terms of soaking up damage and dealing out damage, yeah. but you're achieving it collectively and in a much kind of more kind of broken down that, way. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not sort of a one one ability that does this one thing, it's yeah. kind of the way things kind of interact with each other, which so is really cool. before you went into this dungeon, did you divvy up, like say, you're going to be the, the guy who goes in and does AOE DPS? Or not really, actually. I was kind of being <laughs> run through this thing pretty quickly by these guys. and. Um, and I sort of settled into using my shield. You see, I switched over to hammer and um, shield now. That gives you access to a different yeah. ability. So, my it. one and two and three abilities are based on my hammer, yeah. which are kind of defensive and about kind of stacking up buffs on my allies, I think, the hammer. And then my four and five are my shield abilities, which allow me to um, bash enemies and deflect damage and also put down a massive shield that affects my entire group. Okay. Um, so and then, much more supportive than your double handed sword. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm basically specializing in being the person who doesn't fall over. Yeah. Um, oh, and maybe falls over a little bit. But you notice I like, got back up straight away because of the buff. Yeah. So, um, how, how easy is it to switch between those? Do you have two weapon sets? That's you have two it? weapon sets. Yeah. It depends on your character. Engineers don't. Um, but it's, um, I think it's the tilde key, yeah. which allows you to instantly switch between weapons. And there's a kind of, there's a perfunctory cooldown. Mm. Here we're fighting these spell bloss blossoms, which do huge amounts of damage to you if you don't take them out first. Yeah. I think the idea is that people will kind of learn these techniques as they go through the dungeon and figure out kind of what order to do this stuff in. So when we were in the um, office doing this, yeah. the guy actually yelled at me at that point. Uh, just like jump over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. wipe them down. There's a lot of um, <laughs> there's a lot of going on in those two fights. There's yeah. a lot of effects going on. Is it hard to track what you're being attacked? They problem? have. I mean, they told me recently they have met. They have a system that actually scales the stuff dynamically. Oh, okay. So you um, you will only, especially it's more more apparent in big PvP fights, but you will mostly only see the part of the fight that affect you. Oh, okay. Um, there's still a lot to track, obviously, but I think at that point it becomes sort of reasonable that there's not a lot of irrelevant data. Right. Yeah. There's a lot thrown being thrown at you, but. Um, so let's say uh, like a guy across the other side of the uh, the fight is throwing a fireball. You might not necessarily see that fireball, or it might be smaller. Okay, sure. if it you know if it's not coming to you directly. Yeah. So this oh. is the uh, first boss, and this is about as far as we can show in this dungeon, unfortunately. But um, this uh, fighter queen is all about kind of trying handling these minions, which is being mopped, which are being mopped up really effectively by our elementalists. Mm -hmm. The big patch of fire and that sort of flame that just kills them as they come out. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm sort of, I guess, moving into a tanking role that like you were talking about, yeah, you're you're roles, but I've just decided to guy. hold this person here yeah, sure. and yeah. constantly remove conditions for myself. Um, this dungeon is really about being able to deal with poison. Mm. Like, almost every enemy in this dungeon can poison you quite badly, and therefore, like, the Guardians are able to kind of shrug off status effects, or like what I mentioned earlier, the combos between different classes can be really, really useful. Yeah. You played um, sort of the uh, lower level dungeons as well. How does the level 50 dungeon compare to those in terms of complexity and difficulty? Um, this is story mode. Story mode is kind of intended to be run through fairly re easily by a pickup group. Okay. Um, explorable, I didn't end up playing this dungeon explorable, but Asclonian Catacombs, which we did play the beta world, some of them will have played, yeah. does scale, like, get dramatically harder when uh, it's explorable. Um, and I saw a little bit of this, sort of, where the, they showed me where the hooks were for explorable mode, so things that might be walled off in this okay. can branch off and become more wings of the, yeah. the dungeon. Um, in terms of how it compared, I actually found that this was about as hard as Ascalonian Catacombs, given the level difference. Like it was still, you know, it took about the same amount of time. There, there were some challenges later on that required a bit more thought, and we were lucky that we had a team that was very experienced. It, it's, it's, yeah, and both, I guess, both times I've played through these, I've had teams with me that knew what they were doing. Yeah. Um, but um, 
it is designed that you kind of will get through it the first time to see the story, see these cutscenes like the one we're about to get. Yeah. Um, and then when you go through the subsequently, it's about kind of really trying to figure out these encounters and trying to do them successfully. Um, I was told actually that the hardest stuff in the game, the level 80 dungeons, mm. there are very, very few people at Arena Net who have beaten them yet. Oh, wow. And even then, they've had a hard time with it. Okay. Um, they made the interesting point that they kind of have to build all this stuff to be significantly harder than they can do yes. in order for the players to be able to yeah, expect <laughs> yeah. the players to yeah. exceed their, their well I mean you can imagine stuff. they are only you know 50 people yeah. you're going to throw thousands of people at it so you know. gonna, yeah. yeah well take this guy out so we've got another cutscene coming Just go for the Chamber of Envy. <laughs> I really love that chamber. Look at mine. <laughs> and another member of Destiny's Edge oh, runs away. They hate each other. Yeah, they do. Apparently, they've all got to come together at the end and are kind of bringing the bang back together moment yeah. of victory. But hey. <laughs> Hello, dear heart. I see your friends have already abandoned you. How does it feel? Fallon, it is time to end this madness. The madness is yours. If you rely on others when you know you belong here, with me. I've moved on. We shall see, dear heart. We shall see. Three of my champions are here. I look forward to seeing how you and your remaining allies fare against them. And um, unfortunately, that's about as far as we can show you uh, in this dungeon. But I'm guessing you fight all those. Champions. We do fight all <laughs> three <laughs> champions. Thought, Interestingly, know. though, that's the same structure as Ascalonian Catacombs, but uh, they're also three bosses. So um, it'll be interesting to see if that's kind of structure they roll out across the board. Yeah. A risky strategy here of opening both boxes at once and losing. Yeah, you got both mobs. Yeah, damn it. Indeed. Normally, not a good idea to try and open those things in the middle of fights, but you know. When you roll with QA guys, QA guys you, do, yeah. you do what you like. So yeah, and here we go. Now I'm about to finish the so, so thank you for watching. And um, keep checking PCGamer.com for the rest of Guild Wars 2 week. Absolutely. Bye. Goodbye.